So here's the company, yeah, with the land of underground. Here's an individual. They've exchanged contracts, yeah? They haven't completed. Now the land's worth a million pounds with planning. So what they do is they sell it to a new person or company, okay? And this company completes. Yeah? So this, comp this individual never pays any SDLT, okay? Because he's, he's done a back-to-back -back completion. Those are the rules of SDLT as they stand. So, so he doesn't pay any uh, SDLT. He's made a gain of 900,000 pounds. Yeah? Everybody agree with that? Because he bought the land for uh, 100 grand you exchange. Okay? So the, the added value goes to him. On 900,000 pounds, he's going to pay tax. At what percent? Why 32.5? Oh, because that's him. Okay, not corporation. Yeah. 28, Andrew, why 28? So Andrew says capital gain on a property. Does anybody, does anybody agree with Andrew? Sorry? No, no, it's capital gains tax. But is he going to pay 28% or a different percentage? No entrepreneur's leave. No, he's only got two options. He either pays 28% or he pays 20%. Oh, okay. There is a 10% if you're a basic rate taxpayer, but the 900 grand takes him out of the base very quickly. So we're not going to get into the specifics of that. Okay? Is he going to pay 20% or 28%? Why? Because Andrew says that he's sold property. Why do you think I he's it was wrong? Traders, traders. Sorry? I thought it was treated as a trading property. Or trade. So you agree with Andrew? What, 20%? 28%. No, yes. So he agree, I mean, I agree with Andrew. Andrew, <laughs> who agrees with Andrew? <laughs> Andrew, <laughs> Andrew, <laughs> you're, you're on, on your own. <laughs> Even Emmanuel changed his mind. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to do with peer pressure, by the way, okay? So he's going to pay 20% tax because 28% tax is on residential property. There is no residential property. It's just land, isn't it, with planning. So 900,000 pounds, he's paid 20% tax, which gives him 180 grand. And the money, okay, that's the tax. The rest of the money is in his pocket. So 180... Versus 407, big difference. Yeah. Can you see that? Yeah. Another opportunity for you to think about how can I structure this deal differently, okay, to pay the least amount of tax. Of course, if this individual isn't looking to take all the money out, and wants to sell the piece of land, and then wants to go on to the next deal, then there's no point in them taking, uh, doing a, uh, an exchange taking the money out personally because they're going to pay tax and then they'll have less to reinvest in the next deal. But if you are stuck in that situation where you think, I just want to take all my, my money out, then you can use this as an option. Make sense? Yep. Happy with that? If, if he leaves the money in the company, he will pay 19%. That's it, yeah. Okay. So it's almost the same thing. <laughs> no, it's not. Ah, big difference. If he pays 19%, the money stuck in the company, okay? So the company can reinvest in future deals or do something else. He can't use the money personally. With the example I've given here, once he's paid the personal tax, okay, of this much here, call it, yeah, okay, the, the balance is in his pocket. He can pay off his mortgage, buy a new car, go on holiday, or like Roger, get married, he can do whatever, you know, whatever he pleases. Or loan the, the money back to the company. If he wants to, why would you want to do that? You have to, to reinvest. But if he wants to reinvest, then he might just keep in the company. He could, he could do. He could do. You're right. He could do. He can loan. He can pay 20% uh, income tax, uh, and then sorry, capital gains tax. Then loan the money back to the company and charge interest. He could do. He could do. Yeah. yeah.